Hey guys, the objective of today's video is to go through the derivation for circular slip and I'll be looking at both the undrain and drain case as well as the effect of tension crack and water table on our analysis. So here we have a slope experiencing rotational slip which, is, which we have assumed to be circular. So we've set a center here and this center acts as a center for this, I guess you could call it a circle. And the distance from the center to the slip surface here is a radius r. Now along the slip surface there are shear stresses which are experienced and this resists the rotational movement of this soil element. We also have a water table here and this water table has um, caused hydrostatic pressures to act on the the front of the soil element here which is represented by these pressures here and these pressures can be simplified into forces represented by PW1 and PW2. We also have a force here P which is acting at the top of the soil element and this can represent surcharge. Finally, we also have a force due to the weight of a soil element, represented by W here. Now we're also interested in the distance which these forces act away from the center of the slip circle. So the distance from the surcharge force <clears throat> to the center of the circle is represented by S here. The distance from the weight force of the soil element from the center is represented by X. The distance from this uh, force due to pore water pressure, PW1, is represented by a D. And the distance from the second pore water pressure force, PW2, is represented by this distance here, B. And the reason we're interested in the distances which these forces act away from the center of the circle is because when we consider the factor of safety for circular failure mechanisms, we're actually, we'll actually be looking at the moments which these forces cause as a uh, cause in relation to the center of the circle. So the factor of safety F is equal to the resisting moment divided by the disturbing moment. So now the resisting moment will be forces which <clears throat> cause the slip circle to want to rotate anti-clockwise relative to the center. So in this case, it will be the shear stress here, so tau f. And if we, we have to convert this to a force, we have to multiply that by r, uh, sorry, by l. And the distance which this shear force acts away from the center is the radius r. Now another resisting moment that we have is the moment due to this force pw1, and this acts obviously at a distance d from the center. So we have p w1 multiplied by d. And this force p w2 is also, <coughs> is also a resisting moment. So plus p w2 multiplied by this distance b here. Now our disturbing moments, conversely are the moments which cause the slip circle to want to rotate clockwise. So in this case it will be the weight force W multiplied by X as well as the surcharge force P multiplied by S. Now this isn't a formula that you should try to memorize. You should rather be able to derive this based on your understanding on the situation. Let's now look at an undrained stability analysis. And we'll use undrained analysis for newly cut or newly constructed slopes in fully saturated clay. We also use total stress analysis. So this means that phi u equals to zero. Now if we look at our failure criterion, where tau f equals to cu plus sigma, the normal force, multiplied by a tan phi u. And since 
phi u is equals to zero. This term here cancels out. So therefore we have tau f being equal to the undrained cohesion cu. So here we have our, our circular slip. So factor of safety being defined as the resisting moment. divided by the disturbing moment. Now if we look at the arc, this arc here, which is the slip surface, together with the center of the circle, this forms a sector. And the angle of this sector is given by this angle alpha here. And the length of the arc can be found by multiplying the radius r by the angle alpha, which is in radians. So the length of the arc is equals to r alpha, where alpha is in radians. And the shear force acting along the arc is found by multiplying the shear stress, tau f, by the length of the arc R alpha. So shear force along the arc is equals to, <coughs> and since tau f is equal to Cu, I'll write that down here. So our undrained cohesion multiplied by R alpha. And relative to the center of this slip circle, our shear force will also cause a resisting moment. So our shear resistance moment is equal to the shear force multiplied by the lever arm, which is R. So that's Cu R squared alpha. And our disturbing moment is due to the weight of the soil element. So W multiplied by the lever arm, which is x. So that gives us a factor of safety of f, which equals to cu r squared alpha, divided by w, multiplied by x. So we now need to consider the effect of a tension crack. So in cohesive soils, a tension crack can form near the top of the slope, as the condition of limiting equilibrium and failure develops. So here you can see this is our tension crack here, which occurs at the top of our slip circle. And the slip circle, the, the arc length of the slip circle was terminated at the bottom of the tension crack. So if the tension crack wasn't here, the failure plane would occur through a to B, but because we have a tension crack here in this case, it just stops at C, so the, the, the length of the arc L will be given by AC. And if the tension crack fills with water, the result is that there will be a hydrostatic force acting inside the crack, and this must be considered when we find our factor of safety. So that's given by this expression here. So the resisting moment is found by the shear force multiplied by the radius. And the disturbing moments are found by both the weight of the soil element, W multiplied by X. So W multiplied by X. Plus the hydrostatic force in the tension crack multiplied by D. So that's PW multiplied by D. And because this force is acting clockwise relative to the center of the circle, this is a disturbing moment. So let's now consider the effect of water on undrained stability analysis. So here we have our soil element again, but this time with a water table. Now because we have a water table, there are now hydrostatic pressures which are acting at the front of the soil element 
and the forces due to these pressures must also be considered in the factor of safety. And that's shown here in this expression where, as before, we have the the moment, the resistance moment due to the shear force here, and we have PW1, which is the force due to hydrostatic pressure acting on this diagonal slope, multiplied by the distance d, as well as our second hydrostatic force, so PW2 multiplied by this distance b. And our disturbing moment is W multiplied by x. Now if the water table is below the toe, that is, if this blue line is below this point here, then we don't need to consider the hydrostatic forces in our calculation of the factor of safety. So the expression simplifies down to this term. So drain stability, stability analysis is used when we consider a long, a long time after construction has occurred. So this means that the pore pressures in the soil have dissipated and we'll, be, we'll use effective stress analysis in this situation. The failure criterion we used is tau f equal to c dash plus normal stress sigma dash tan phi dash. Now the, the issue we are faced with when we use use our effective stress analysis is <clears throat> because the normal stress actually varies along the failure plane. So as a result, we have to use a method of slices in order to effectively perform, to effectively carry out our slope analysis. And I'll talk more about method of slices in a subsequent video. Hope this helps guys.